All right, guys. Hey, guys, welcome back to another fantastic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about intermolecular forces. Let's get after it. All right, so there are three basic types of intermolecular forces dipole, dipole, London forces, and hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding is the big one. You have to have OH or NH groups. If you don't have OH or NH groups, you certainly do not have hydrogen bonding. Keep that in mind. Now, intermolecular forces are, are attractions between molecules. Now, it's attraction between two different molecules or numerous different molecules, all right? Inter implies uh, external to you, okay? So if you think about the interstate system, interstate highways go from one state to another. They connect states. Intrastate highways connect inside of the same state. So the Florida Turnpike is an example of an intrastate highway. I-95 is an example of an interstate highway. So they're, sl they're different, right? Interstates connect different states. Intrastates stay within the same state. So intermolecular forces connect one molecule to another. Now, the, the attraction is sometimes very weak, sometimes moderately strong. And we're going to learn about all three. Now, hopefully, this is a review for you of general chemistry. Okay, dipole-dipole forces. Most, one of the more common ones. Dipole-dipole attractions result from the approach of two polar molecules. So circle that word, polar. They must be polar. If they're positive and negative ends approach, the, attra the attraction... The interaction is an attractive one. If the negative and negative and the positive and positive come together, that's repulsive. In liquid or solid, the molecules are mostly oriented with the positive and negative ends together, and the net force is attractive. So in other words, molecules, I have an example here. Here's an example of it. So here we have uh, methyl chloride again. Now remember, the chlorine is delta negative. The carbon, and, or this side of the molecule, if you will, is delta positive. So that means that the delta positive of another methyl chloride um, molecule will want to line up with the delta negative of a chloride on another molecule or a chlorine on another molecule. And that will be symbolized like this. And this is an attractive force. So most of the molecules in a bottle of methyl chloride will be lined up like this. Okay? Because that's attractive, and that's one of the reasons. That's one way uh, molecules can become liquids. They just come, they, they get so close together that they condense to each other. London forces. Now these are a little bit more complicated, so we're going to take a little bit more time. One of the Van der Waals forces. Don't worry about that too much. Is a temporary dipole moment in a molecule that can induce a temporary dipole in a nearby molecule. That's weird. Hmm. An attractive dipole-dipole interaction results in a fr it results for a fraction of a second. So they're here, and then they're gone. And it is the main attractive force in nonpolar molecules. All other uh, molecules that are polar use either dipole-dipole or hydrogen bond bonding. Nonpolar molecules have to use London dispersion forces because that's all that's left. Okay. So let's imagine then we have a molecule. And it has positives and negatives, okay? Those positives and negatives are randomly thrown around there. They're just kind of moving, undulating or whatever. Now imagine we have this molecule here with a negative and a positive on one side and a positive and negative on the other. So on this side of the molecule, this negative will attract a positive from another one. Now remember, these attractions are fleeting. They don't last very long. This positive will attract a negative from another. But remember... This negative is here right now. It could be gone in a fraction of a second because the electrons that are causing this negative charge are here and gone again. Okay? Imagine, if you will, a molecule or an atom of xenon. It has 54 electrons. Half are on, and now imagine half are on this side and the other half are on this side. Okay? That's neutral on both sides. It has the same charge, not neutral, but it has the same charge on both sides. So there is no dipole moment. It could happen where the xenon will have 50% of its electrons plus one on this side. So if half the electrons of the xenon atom are on this side, this side of the atom becomes negative, or delta negative, I should say. 
this side of the thing becomes slightly positive, right? So that means that if another xenon were to come around here to the negative, it would, it, it would the electrons in that xenon would be repelled by it, and that side of the xenon would become positive, okay? And that's London dispersion forces in a nutshell. Now, I'm not going to dwell on it too much. If you have any questions, please ask me in class or read it in your textbook. It's really, it's a complicated one to kind of explain. Better if you read it yourself. Hydrogen bonding is by far the most common type of uh, intermolecular force we're going to talk about. It happens a lot, especially in amines and alcohols, okay? It's basically a dipole-dipole interaction, but it's more specific because it involves oxygen and hydrogen or nitrogen and hydrogen. So it's much more specific, but it is a dipole-dipole interaction. Water, for example, will use this type of interaction. So here we have uh, methanol. Notice here, the hydrogens are delta positive. The hydrogens on the oxygens, I should say, are delta positive. The oxygens are delta negative. Okay, now let's look at the methylamine. Again, the hydrogens are delta positive, the nitrogen is delta negative. Okay, and delta positive. So these things are all hydrogen bonding together, and that is a stabilizing effect. But this is a, is a type of dipole-dipole interaction, but it's very specific in that it involves hydrogen and oxygen, or hydrogen and nitrogen, okay? And uh, I guess we could talk a little bit about boiling points while here. I was going to make a separate video, but let's just keep going. Now, the boiling points and intermolecular forces. Notice, for example, right here. Here we have ethanol with a boiling point of 78 degrees Celsius. Here we have methyl, dimethyl ether with a boiling point of negative 25. Now, if you look carefully, C2H6O... C2H6O, they have exactly the same molecular formula. So they have exactly the same molecular weight. Hmm, that's curious. I wonder what's going on there. Well, it has to do with the fact that this can hydrogen bond. And a hydrogen bond is a fairly, well, it's a really good attractive force. Diethyl, dimethyl ether, all it can really do is dipole-dipole interactions, and that's not nearly as good as a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds, yes, are dipole-dipole interactions, but they're very specific to hydrogen, bonded to oxygen or nitrogen, okay? So that's going to account for the boiling point difference. And notice it is quite dramatic, which tells us that hydrogen bonding must be a fairly strong force, where dipole-dipole interactions are not nearly as strong, Okay. Now, polarity effects on solubility. You probably learned a little bit about this in your general chem class. Like dissolves like. Polar dissolves polar. Nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. And that should be fairly obvious to you at this point. Water is polar. It wants to dissolve polar. Let me draw it a little nicer. It wants to dissolve polar things. So things like uh, sugar, alcohol, these are things that water wants to dissolve. Why? Because water can hydrogen bond to it. So here's the structure of water. I'm going to get my mug out of the way here. There's a structure of water. Here's the structure of, say, ethanol. Delta negative, delta positive. Delta positive, delta negative. Notice that interaction here is a hydrogen bond. That's a hydrogen bond. Very strong interaction. So that's going to help incorporate the ethanol into the water. It's going to bring it in. So it's, if, you want, if you want to think of it, the ethanol or the methanol or whatever alcohol is kind of mimicking what water can do. So they can, they can kind of recognize each other and dissolve into each other because they have the same intermolecular forces. It's kind of how it works. So here's an example of uh, salt. So this would be a salt over here. Here's water. Now notice the salt has negative and positive ions, right? Here's our water molecules. And here's, this is the oxygen here. Oops. OK. 
kind of draw these in to make it more clear to you guys. Okay. Notice how here the positive ion is surrounded by the delta negative oxygens, right? It's too small. Surrounded by the delta negative oxygens. And over here, the negative ion is surrounded by the delta positive hydrogens. And this is called solvation. Basically, it's how... There we go. Get me out of there, too. Basically, it's how things get dissolved in water. Now, this is also known... We're going to talk about this more when we get into chapter... I think it's six. This is called a solvent cage. The cage surrounds the ion and prevents it from reacting sometimes. We're going to learn about that in chapter, I think it's six. But it's good that you understand how polar solvent will dissolve polar solute. It's a very good thing to know. It's kind of the same for all solutes. Now, here is a nonpolar solvent trying to do that. Now, notice, if you will, this is nonpolar, so there's no delta positives or negatives. So you put in this, this ionic thing, cations and anions, and here we have a situation where these cations and anions don't even know that there's anything here. Because remember, molecules and ions don't think or smell or feel anything. All they can do is react to the energy that's around them. According to these ions right here, they can only sense pluses and minuses, right? They can only sense delta negatives, delta positives. Well, there isn't any here. So they're not going to interact. They're not going to be able to, um, you know, be good to each other. <coughs> Excuse me. Now here is a nonpolar with a nonpolar, and they're all using London dispersion forces. So these things, these molecules here, these nonpolar solids that are weakly held together by their intermolecular forces, their London dispersion forces, can be, these interactions can be broken up by a nonpolar solvent. Why? Because the nonpolar solvent is using the same London forces, okay, to break them apart and dissolve into and get them to dissolve into them. All right? So it's all about the intermolecular force. Water's polar. It can break up interactions be between polar molecules. Um, say vegetable oil is nonpolar. It can break up interactions between nonpolar molecules. All right? Uh, and here's just an example of nonpolar with polar. Again, water is hydrogen bonding to itself. Why would it want to hydrogen bond to something that has no charge? It can't. There's no charge on this nonpolar entity. So water is just like, doesn't even recognize that it's there. Because remember, molecules don't think, hear, or speak. All they can do is react to the charges that are over here. There are no charges, so there is no interaction. And with that, we will call this video done. Because this has been going on pretty long. Sorry about that. So that was intermolecular forces. Make sure you read about them or ask questions about them if you don't completely understand. It's very important that you kind of get the idea behind intermolecular forces and dipole moments. And uh, that's about it. So now with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. See you soon.